The rise of hyperscale has defined the industry for the better part of the last decade. But as some markets are beginning to flourish, others have, have become too big to fail. Joining me now in Infrastructure 2022 in Toronto is Phil Lawson Shanks, Chief Innovation Officer at Align Data Center. And Phil, first, it's a pleasure to see you. It's and been you. way too long, even before COVID. It's been yeah. a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> so really nice <laughs> seeing you. Um, how do you characterize the, the, the hyperscale landscape today? Uh, and in what terms of geographies as well? Mm, that's a great question. And I think we've seen a huge shift, and it really depends on which hyperscale you're talking about, because a lot of their build process and strategy is predicated by the application set they're using. So for example, if, if you're a Google, that was designed as network first, so they they have less network latency, so they have a bit more flexibility. Uh, if it's an Oracle or a Microsoft, they have a lot of network latency, so they have to be very close to the user base. Mm -hmm. Facebook, they can tolerate whole campus failures because you know the way they they cache their data sets. Um, so again, and Amazon, they they're very particular about their design structure. So ultimately, we're seeing just an enormous growth. Um, you know, digital usage is just exploding. Uh, we saw with COVID, uh, the you know, Teams usage just uh, quadrupled in a few days. Uh, Zoom is just through the roof. So uh, all of that uh, and uh, all of the, the new forms of digital infrastructure, I mean, who could predict TikTok? All of those things. It's just growing like gangbusters. And I there's a new one called Be Real. So that's the new... Oh, I'm not familiar with that so one. Okay. I learned about that yesterday. Okay. Um, so here at the conference, a big conversation has been around um, build versus lease, or lease mm -hmm. versus build. Mm -hmm. What's your view of that? Is it uh, uh, Hyperscale is going to start building more instead of coming to you guys and, and just lease things from you? Or mm. That again, that, and we're seeing shifts on that. So, and again, you see the um, there's a lot of migration of people within the Hyperscale build community. Um, there are some people that always want to build themselves. They've been moved to other businesses. Um, a lot of that is based on having the land and, and the supply chain for all the, the electrical and mechanical equipment. We see a lot of the hyperscalers come to us as a fill-in. We, we do a lot of specific build-to-suit, build-to-scale for them, and we, we don't really discuss where those places are. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also seeing a lot of them come to us as a secondary model because we have the supply chain. We A couple of years ago, we went out and we started pre-buying um, our supply chain, the gens, UPSs, switchgear. We, we, when we did this four or five years ago, we had 20 megawatts of full capacity in supply chain. Now we're north of a gigawatt. Mm -hmm. So we have the ability to build for them. And obviously our build process is faster as well. Uh, if you, and I, I'm not giving anything away, but if you look at one of the, the larger hyperscalers, as soon as their platform team or product team has said, we need to be in this zone for whatever business reason, by the time the engine sort of spins up, it could be two years from that decision point before they're passing traffic. Whereas we can do that in about nine months. Yeah, which is a massive difference because time is money. Absolutely. Um, especially Absolutely. in the days we live in with so much digital adoption. Yes. Um, and speak of that, have there been any major advancements around network and, um, sorry, network and compute requirements um, from the hyperscale part? Uh, so density, density is going up and up and up. Uh, a lot of the, uh, in just my experience of working with a lot of them in previous companies and, and where I work now in Aligned, and the reason I came to Aligned was our ability to go up to 50 kilowatts of cabinet. Mm -hmm. uh, previously, you'd see a particular stamp where, because they're using a cooling technology that uses underfloor cooling, they can maybe do 25 kilowatts in the, in the middle four cabinets, but it goes out to three at the edges. And as they're using different chipsets with NVIDIA, with a, uh, AMD, all of the new chips, they want to have higher density. So with our technology, we can do with just air. I mean, it's, it's air, it's a, it's a different, we can talk about that as well. Um, but we can go up to 50 kilowatts of cabinet every cabinet mm. uh, at a very low PUE. So they're coming to us for those uh, functional shift changes because they, they need more density in a smaller footprint. Mm. And also a speed of light. Exactly. To delivered. Exactly. Um, and then when it comes to investments, before we jump into a line, when it comes to investment, this is driving billions of dollars mm -hmm. Um, all across the board, whatever you look in the world, it's driving billions of dollars. Yep. What thematics and trends um, are you seeing that are really interesting but also surprising to you mm. of who's coming into this? So in terms of uh, investment coming in, green investment is a big mm. play. Everyone's trying to be very, very green. And again, we can talk about how we're, we're yeah. leading the charge well, on that. So oh, so exactly. Yeah. We were the first to, to do it at that level and lots of other people that don't know, which is, mm. is great. Um, but the, the ability to, to have access to that form of, of uh, 
uh, financing, and it's linked very clearly with our KPI. So we, you know, it's not only um, our environmental uh, performance, but it's also our safety performance. Uh, we're seeing a, a, I mean, there's lots of different things moving in the marketplace, but again, more buildings, more places, mm -hmm. built faster, uh, and also we're very uh, pro uh, ESG. Um, we, with Macquarie, we've been reporting on ESG for several years. Uh, all our load uh, our energy is renewable. We, what we're doing now is looking at the materials that we're, mm -hmm. we're using, so the, the generators, UPS, switchgear, the fabric of the building, the cement. So we're looking at the embodied carbon, not only the operational carbon for the electrons we're, we're passing through to energize and run the systems, but also the embodied carbon of all of the materials so we can have a full, complete view uh, to give to our clients so they can report on that for their own purposes. Okay, a lot to dissect there, and mm -hmm. I will go one by one, but I will start with probably the, the, the hardest part of the conversation around the energy crisis and this looming recession. Mm -hmm. um, how is Align preparing for the next few months, for the next six to eight months, with everything that's going on in the world, especially in Europe, but which is also affecting the US, mm -hmm. and the US yes. economy is also going through a oh, yeah. time. So obviously the, you know, the biggest uh, network campus on the planet is Virginia, North Virginia, and they're really tapped out. And that's that, the reason for that, if you look at the mas massive growth we've had, over the last few years, people, so we would put a load letter into the, the utility provider and say we'd want 50 megawatts, uh, and not just us, but everybody. But as, our, as we sell capacity to our clients, it takes them a while to sort of ramp up to that. So the utilities have got used to, you know, they, they say, oh yes, 50, 100, 20, whatever that is, but no one's using it. So they, they didn't provision fast enough. Now they've been caught flat-footed because we're all consuming all of that power and we're, you know, they're tapped out. So for us, uh, there are, we're, we're looking at alternative uh, on-site energy generation mm -hmm. Uh, for Virginia. Also, we've just uh, taken down a lot of space in a new location just across the river in Quantum Loophole Park, which is fed by three separate, uh, it's an old um, aluminium smelting plant that's been cleaned up entirely, but it has three um, high tension line feeds directly in. So we're still, I mean, even though we have that re redundancy of power, we're still going with our traditional mm. on site uh, uh, disaster recovery. But looking at different forms of energy, uh, looking at where that is, that, that's going to be one of the, the key factors over the next mm -hmm. few years. Okay, uh, speaking of portfolio and expansion, so you're in Northern Virginia, you're in Chicago, mm -hmm. Phoenix, Salt Lake City, and I guess Dallas, mm -hmm. Dallas, Dallas as well, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you also raised $1.75 billion in a sustainability linked loan for mm -hmm. expansion. Yeah. Uh, give us an update of what's to come. So a lot more uh, pins Beyond on the, the map. Loop yeah, exactly. A lot more pins <laughs> on the map, and we don't we don't talk about that very often because um, I know. Well, that. We, That's why I, yeah, I, know, I know. <laughs> but then when we do, and we talk about the land, then the land prices go up typically. So we yeah. just keep that under wraps. Uh, but with with Macquarie as our backer, um, we've been out buying either buying land or locking down land all over the country, and uh, we have a team that works specifically with the hyperscalers because again. They, they're not quite sure where they want to be next, but as soon as they decide, they come to us, we have the land, we've already arranged it with the, the utility, we know where the network's going to be, we can build very quickly for them. Okay, so Macquarie um, is an Australian um, investment management brand. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of investments around the world with data centers as well. Does Align have ambitions to go beyond the US border? Oh yes, yeah. Uh, but we partner as well, but there's lots of sister companies that we have. Okay. So in APAC, as uh, Airtrunk, uh, in uh, Europe, Macquarie have just invested heavily in, with Virtus, based out of London. Um, so you, all of these things, we work very closely. And, and uh, Neutrality is another one for the, the, mm -hmm. the communication hubs. Mm -hmm. So we, we work a lot with our, our sister companies. Um, but yeah, we, we're always looking at uh, new zones to, to develop into. And okay, I'm not so going to say any more than that. Yeah, well, you're already giving me the cheeky <laughs> smile. And I'm yeah. like, where am I going to go with this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, but that's interesting that the, 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 the Macquarie Data Center, Realm, or the States, you guys can all play with each other around the world. So yeah. it's not siloed. No, but I mean, we, it doesn't happen very often, but if we had a, a client that absolutely wants to be in Asia Pac, then we would work with Air Trunk, Air Trunk to do that, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, well, yeah. I didn't know that. See, that's yeah. already a new thing. Yeah. Um, and I really want to ask what new zones you're gonna go to. <laughs> you say there's pins mm. on the map coming, but uh, we can talk about that um, off the record. Mm. Uh, but Phil, your job title, Chief Innovation Officer. Mm -hmm. What innovation is really making you really excited right now. Mm. Oh, so I, I touched on the embodied carbon. Mm. That's very exciting to me. So the ability to track the, the 
the carbon that was used in creation of a generator, a, a piece of switch gear, a building, and be able to track that through and report against that. Um, and there's a whole series of technologies that we're putting into place for that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's particularly interesting to me mm -hmm. right now. And we're leading the charge on that. We, we work with, in fact, we were uh, one of the, the, the front runners of the, the iMasons um, climate, accord. climate Accord. And so the hyperscale is involved in that, mm -hmm. a lot of the suppliers. So we're all agreeing to agree on a structure. Mm. We're already using a structure that we think is, is phenomenal. Mm. Okay. And my final question has three questions to it. So we are in Toronto, mm -hmm. Infrastructure 2022, really nice mm -hmm. conference. Mm -hmm. uh, first question is, will Canada become a pin on your map? What do you think of the conference? And what's the one thing that's going to happen in the next 12 months that's going to be the big topic of conversation at this conference in September 2023? Mm. Okay. So. I like Canada a lot. Yeah. Um, there's a lot Just here. Business like Canada. Uh, <laughs> I think I think our clients like Canada. Yeah. Um, the thing I like about uh, Canada, particularly if you look at Montreal, for example, yeah. most of their energy for the whole of the year is entirely renewable, except for two weeks where it's so cold they have to get energy from the US, the US which isn't totally clean. So that's great. There's a lot of that here. Uh, the network here has grown tremendously. Um, whether we're going to be part of that, I'm not going to give you any indication of that, but it's a great place. I'll be waiting great for place. the press release. Sure. <laughs> uh, what was your other question? Oh, this, this conference. Uh, I've conference? enjoyed the conference. I, I, I think they're tremendous. Uh, Phil and, and Jabaz, the, the, the amount of data they collect and the way they present it and the people they've had here, phenomenal. Um, for next year, this time next year, yeah. I think we're going to be talking about where we're all buying our energy from. I'm really excited about nuclear, for example, mm -hmm. and, and the new sodium, uh, small, mm -hmm. um, uh, the thorium uh, nuclear uh, plants. Uh, that's going to be really interesting to me, mm -hmm. how, how we combat this issue. Because as an industry, uh, we take 1% of the whole energy supply for the world, which is, which is a lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to be very careful with our PUEs. Water as well is very important. So the resources that we use to deliver services to the largest ele electrical suppliers, you know, the, the cloud providers, we, we just have to think about how we're doing that. Really? Where we're going to be buying energy from. I like that. Exactly. Very nice. Yeah. Phil Austin Chang, Chief Innovation Officer at Align Data Centers. Thank you so much for talking to me. Um, as for your home, thank you for watching and do check our website and give us a follow on social media for the latest breaking and timely news from the digital infrastructure sector worldwide. At the Tech Capital, your lead, we report. Bye for now.